Let's go ahead and kick off today's webinar, which is five simple tips for troubleshooting your Kubernetes pods. Our speaker today is Guy Salton, who is a solution architect at CodeFresh. Hi, Guy, how are you? Hi, thank you very much. I'm great. Good, good, Feeling good. good and... Excellent. Yeah. Well, I'm going to put myself on mute because I know you have a great presentation going, so <laughs> I'm just going to let you get right to it. Thank you so much, and thanks everybody for joining. Um, hope um, this is going to be interesting for you. So uh, as, as um, uh, the presenter said, though, we're going to talk about five simple tips uh, for troubleshooting Kubernetes pods. So this can be um, a great kind of session for like really beginners for Kubernetes, but also uh, for people that started playing around with Kubernetes and experienced them, some um, issues with deployments, then um, I, hopefully this will be uh, helpful for you. Uh, so my name is, is Guy Salton. I'm a solution architect uh, working for CodeFresh. Uh, for those who don't know, CodeFresh is uh, uh, the first uh, uh, container native CI CD platform uh, designed specifically for Kubernetes and microservices. So uh, yeah, feel free to check it out. Um, you have my email here as well. So if you want to send me any questions now or after the webinar, uh, feel free to do that. Um, and uh, quickly going over the agenda for today's webinar. So uh, we'll first discuss uh, uh, the, the reason that pods fail in, in Kubernetes. There are two main reasons uh, why uh, pods will fail. We'll then uh, go over the five tips uh, for troubleshooting and uh, the, the pods failure, and we'll see when, uh, in which situation we should use um, which, which tip. Um, and we'll also have um, demos for uh, debugging uh, common reasons for, for pods uh, failure. Uh, so hopefully that, that will be a useful part. Um, and we'll then end by a summary. Um, just so you know, um, we uh, created a GitHub repo, a public repo uh, that you can access that has all the demos uh, for today's webinar. So um, you, you can check it out as well. Um, so let's, let's get started and see why uh, pods fail. So uh, we can uh, we can have this in, in two two different areas. So the first uh, first reason why pods will fail would be the startup failure, which means that the containers inside the pod uh, just don't don't start. Okay. So uh, we'll talk about common errors and and see why would containers uh, won't start. Um, the second is uh, the runtime failure meaning um, that the application code fails after the container startup. Um, so we'll address each of these situations uh, systematically. Um, the, the tools that we're going to use to uh, to interact with Kubernetes today is, is kubectl, uh, command line utility, so or kube control, if, if you might be familiar with it. Um, so that's what we're going to use. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with our first tip. Uh, our first tip is uh, observe your pods. Um, so this is maybe one of the first commands that uh, you'll uh, you'll learn when starting uh, to use Kubernetes, um, which is the kubectl or kubectl get pods, right? So this command shows you uh, all of the pods in uh, your namespace and then shows you the status for each of these pods. Um, so you can see some statuses here, and um, this is actually the namespace that I'm going to use for our demos. So you see that I have some pods here that are on status uh, creator container configure, some with um, crash loop back off, image pool back off, et cetera. And we're going to address all of these issues and, and debug them. Um, and um, what you want to verify, you know, if we're talking about this tip, is you want to verify that your pods are in status either uh, running or ready. Um, so uh, ready means that the pod is able to serve requests. Um, and running means that the pod has been bound to a node uh, and all of the containers have been created uh, while at least one container is still running. So that's why it would show a uh, status of running. Uh, so this is the first uh, tip and we'll see it live once we get to, to the demos. Um, second tip, um, and this is an extremely useful one, is to check the events related to your pods. Um, so if uh, some of you are familiar with this command, it's the kubectl describe pod uh, with providing the, the pod name. Um, and uh, we, we saw some of the uh, possible error codes uh, for the pod status. Um, we'll see that uh, describing our pod uh, would be very helpful. Um, 
mostly in, in situations where the container itself did not start. So if you remember, uh, we discussed this at the beginning where there are two main reasons why uh, our pods will fail. Uh, one is the startup when containers don't even start. So this is where the described pod would be extremely useful. Then there's the other situation when the, the pods start, but the application inside the container crashes. Um, so we'll see other tips um, uh, to debug these situations. Uh, so we'll just uh, actually go ahead and start with our first uh, demo, which is debugging uh, the image pullback of error. And I'm sure that if uh, uh, most of you have started playing around with Kubernetes, uh, almost for sure you've seen this error. Okay, um, this, when this error appears, it means that Kubernetes isn't able to retrieve the image for one of the containers of the pod. So you know that uh, a pod in Kubernetes can have more than one container. Um, in the demos today, we'll um, only address uh, situations when, where the pod has one container to it. Um, so the image pull back off means that Kubernetes isn't able to retrieve uh, the image uh, for the container of the pod. And there are three main scenarios, uh, common scenarios, uh, why would that happen? So uh, one is that the image name that you provided in the pod spec is invalid. So maybe you had some typo in the image name, uh, maybe this image doesn't exist. Uh, the second uh, scenario is that the tag doesn't exist. So maybe you referred to an image that does exist, but you uh, try to pull it with a tag that does not exist. Um, and the third scenario is that the, spe the specified image is in a private registry, okay? Unlike, so not like in a public Docker Hub or something, it's a, in a private registry, um, maybe in, in ECR or GCR or something like that, um, and that your Kubernetes cluster doesn't have access to pull it. So for the first two cases, and we'll see this in the demo now, uh, it can easily be solved by correcting the image name in, in, or the tag. Um, and for the third scenario, and to fix it, we're going to have to add the credentials to uh, our private registry uh, in a secret and then uh, uh, have a reference to it uh, in our pod. So let's see exactly how we would do that. So let me open uh, my terminal. And I have um, some uh, Kubernetes manifests here, uh, files for different applications that I'm, I'm going to show you in the demo today. And we can start by using the first tip that we learned, which is the cube. CTL get pods, right? And this will show us all of the pods um, in the current namespace. And I see all of these pods and I see that, uh, that some of them has different uh, statuses. And um, let's focus on, on these two. So I see that I have one uh, pod here um, that is called web and, and I see that it's in running state, which just, this is great. Uh, but the second one, web one, is on uh, status image pull back off. Um, so we said that uh, the second tip, right, describing our pod can be extremely useful for such uh, situations where um, um, we get a, an error message that relates to container not even start. So we can run the cube ctl describe command and then say pod and then just provide the name of our pod. Okay, sorry, that was a bit too long. Exactly. Run this command, and this command will show us all the information about um, about this um, about this pod. Um, and you see that uh, the reason uh, uh, here is image pull back off, and it's currently uh, terminated. Um, if you look at the image used, um, it's I see I have a typo here, right? So I probably meant uh, nginx, and I forgot the x. So um, uh, I see if I look at the events at the end of the output of the describe pod, I see that um, it's uh, uh, trying to pull this image, but then it's getting this error. Uh, so to fix this uh, issue, as I said, um, I can just edit um, the, um, the pod spec and change it to the correct image name. So let me clean the screen again and um, look at the pods. So I'm going to get this pod. I want to edit it so i can just run the edit command pod paste my pod name uh, and click enter uh, this will let me edit the actual pod and change the name of the image that i'm going to uh, refer to so i'm going here under spec containers and i'm going to just add the x and now this image uh, should exist i can save this pod 
uh, uh, spec and you see that it's now edited. If I run the get pods command again, I see that this web one pod is now running. So that uh, fixed the issue. And very similarly, if you had um, the image name uh, valid, but the tag wasn't valid, then it would be exactly the same. And you would just be able to uh, see the error in the describe uh, pod command, then edit the, the pod and change to the correct tag. Uh, now let's see the, the third scenario, which means that, and I see here, um, this app, and if I run this again, um, you see that sometimes it changes, right? It, it showed this uh, this pod with a status of error image pool. Now I see that it's image pool back off as well, right? And if I describe this pod, uh, so I'll run the kubectl describe pod, and I'll paste the pod name. Uh, and I look here, I see that the image that is trying to pull is not a public image. It's actually in uh, a private uh, Docker registry. And this is the image name, and this is the tag. And I see that um, it fails on uh, pulling this image, right? So this is the third scenario when I'm trying to pull an image from a private registry. So even though it exists there, the image name is valid, but Kubernetes doesn't have access to pull this image as um, it's a pri in a private registry. So uh, what I would have to do is uh, provide uh, Kubernetes with the pull secret uh, for my Docker registry. And um, I'm actually using CodeFresh for uh, my CI CD platform. Um, so um, with CodeFresh, it's, it's even easier. I can just go to my uh, CodeFresh um, platform, right? So this is the, the CodeFresh account, um, and I can uh, see all of my environments here, right? So it's a it's full CI and CD platform. Uh, in the CD side, uh, you can manage your environments like production staging, uh, load test environment. Here I see my environment here, and I see that it's in error state, right? Um, and I can go and see my Kubernetes services. And I see that here, this is the EKS demo that I'm using uh, for this uh, demo. I see that under the tips webinar namespace, I have a service called my app demo. And I have zero out of one replicas. And if I click on the status here, I see that the pod status is uh, back off pulling image, right? It can't pull this image. So that's what we, what we saw on the terminal as well. Um, now here I can go and actually edit this service and I know that the part that is missing is the image pool secret. So I can just go and create a registry pool secret from the UI um, and choose the registry that I'm going to do it. It's the internal registry that CodePress provides. I'm going to click on create and then I'm going to redeploy this. And if I look now, and I search for my cluster. Yep. I should see that it's now, um, it should now uh, con uh, have it. So you see now I have uh, one out of run replicas. And if I look at the status, I see that the pod is now uh, successful. And I can click on the endpoint and see that my uh, application is running. Um, so of course, you can add this pool secret um, um, directly uh, using Kubernetes API. Um, this is just a bit easier um, to do uh, as I'm using CodeFresh. Um, so if I go and get my pods again, I can see that this pod that was currently uh, on the image pool back off is now running, right? So we talked about image pool back off and we talked about the three different scenarios and we were able to fix them. Um, so let's go back to our presentation. Let's see another example. Uh, so the second example uh, that I'm going to talk about is the run container error. Uh, message and this error appears when the container is unable to start. Okay, so um, that happens even before the application inside the container starts. So it, it still relates to the first um, kind of uh, section of, of error messages uh, that relates to uh, issues when the uh, container is not able to start before the application starts running. Uh, this usually happens when you have uh, missing secrets or config maps. Okay, so um, as you might know, Kubernetes uh, best practices recommends passing application runtime configuration um, using config maps or secrets. Um, this data uh, could include uh, database credentials, for example, API endpoints, uh, other configuration flags, 
Uh, a common mistake that I've seen developers make is uh, to create a deployment that refer uh, uh, that reference properties uh, of config maps or secrets that don't exist. Okay, so this could resolve in the run container error message. So let's um, go again to my terminal and clean it up so it will just be a bit easier. Uh, so it won't be confusing. And I see that here I have a pod called config map pod and the status is create container uh, config error. So this they actually changed the, 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 the name of the of the error, right? So it used to be run container error. Uh, you can also see it as create container config error, right? It's, uh, it's pretty much the same thing. And um, we're still gonna use the second tip that we learned, right, to describe the pod. So let's go ahead and describe this pod. So I'm gonna write the describe, sorry, describe pod and add the pod name. Uh, if I look here, um, and I look at the last section of the events, right? Uh, I see that um, it explains uh, what went wrong, which is the pod is attempting to access um, the config map named special config, right? Um, but it cannot found it in this namespace. Um, so this is the issue, uh, right? So I said the run container error um, means that usually that we're missing a, a config map or a secret. So to fix that, um, we can create a config map um, and then the pod should restart and pull uh, in the runtime data from this config map. So let's go ahead and do that. So I can uh, clear the screen again um, and I can run the LL command to see um, all of my manifests here and actually have this uh, config map special uh, config. I can print it to the screen right now so you just see how it looks like. Uh, super simple, right? Uh, it's kind config map. Um, this is the data that is, it contains. Um, it's going to be named special config and it's going to be deployed to uh, our namespace. So I can just go ahead and run the kubectl apply um, dash f to pass a file. I'm going to pass this config map file, right? So config map special config, apply it. Right now, let's see that it's applied. I can now rub the kubectl get config maps command and I should see it here, right? So I see it's the age is only seven seconds, right? It's what we just uh, deployed. So we have the config map here. If we now go back uh, to running our kubectl get pods, get pods, um, and we take a look at this config map pod, we see that it's now on status completed. So, um, uh, so, so that indeed uh, uh, fixed that issue. It was able to refer um, to, uh, to, this, uh, to this config map now. Um, so by the way, um, we talked about config map, but accessing secrets as environment variables within your pod specification will result uh, in similar errors, okay? Like we've just seen with config maps. Um, so this is the run container error, um, and we can go and talk about the next um, uh, kind of error, which is the container creating pod. So every time that you um, start a new pod, it would start with the status container creating, but, um, but usually if everything's okay, it would just switch after a second or two. Once the container is created, uh, it will start running um, the application inside the container, it will switch uh, ideally to the status of either uh, ready or running, right? Um, but sometimes you would see uh, pods, like I can see here, that are stuck on container creating for 55 minutes, right? So this uh, can't be right. Uh, there's something uh, wrong here. And um, what happened here, and we'll see that together, is that we just talked about accessing um, secrets or config map for environment variables, but what if we're trying to access a secret or config map via a volume? Um, so this is actually what happens here, and I can show you the spec of this uh, pod called secret pod, right? So if we run the cat command, uh, it's called missing secret YAML. Um, you see that what this guy is trying to do is he's trying to uh, mount a volume from a secret, okay? So I'm going to uh, have this volume mount and I'm going then to uh, refer to it, um, to refer it to a secret. 
Um, but I see that it's stuck on container creating. That's because I don't have any secret. So I don't have the secret, right? So if I run kubectl get uh, secrets, right? So I have just a, this default token, and this is the uh, the pool secret to pull my image that we saw uh, for the image uh, image pool back off. Uh, but we don't have this my other secret. So if we go and then uh, run the uh, get pods command again, right, our first tip, and we look at this secret pod, so we describe it, right, using our second tip that we learned, um, we will indeed see this error of kubelet. So it's telling us that kubelet failed to mount a volume from the secret called my other secret. Um, this is because uh, this secret um, isn't there, right? So we don't have such a secret. And you see uh, it states this very clearly, secret, my other secret is not found. Um, so just like before, if you create a secret with this name, it would just um, fix your issue. Uh, so that was for the container creating pod. Um, and we can go ahead and uh, go back to our presentation. And let's see what will happen uh, with a pending pod. So uh, when you create a pod, um, sometimes it would just stay in the pending state. Why would this happen? So assuming that your scheduler component is running fine, are uh, a few cases why the pod would be stuck on pending is uh, the following. So uh, maybe the cluster doesn't have any, enough resources such as CPU and memory to run the pod. So it would just, it, it, it would not be able to start because it doesn't have these, the resources. Um, so it would just be stuck on pending. Uh, another scenario is that the current namespace has a resource quota object and creating the pod will make the namespace go over the quota. So that's another scenario. Um, and the third one is that the pod is bound to a pending persistent volume claim. Okay, so if the persistent volume claim itself uh, is pending and the pod is bound to this uh, persistent volume claim, claim that then it will also be um, stuck on pending. Um, so we can go back to our terminal and we can see, let me clear my screen again. Uh, and by the way, I, I just um, um, to show you, right, we, we showed you that I, I said that I have this, uh, I created this uh, public GitHub repo. So this is here and you see all of these uh, manifests here. Um, I'll also update the readme um, so you'll know what file referred to, to what demo. Um, then, um, Let's go back to our terminal and let's run the kubectl get pods command, right? Tip number one um, to observe our pods. And we see that we indeed have a pod here which is in status running and zero out of one um, pods are ready, right? So um, as this is not, if you think about it, which category is this error? Uh, does it relate to, right? Is it, does it relate to containers don't start, so startup failure, or it contains to runtime failure? Um, so obviously this, this relates to startup failure as it's pending, right? It, the, the pod itself didn't even start, so obviously the container didn't start. Um, so that's why uh, the second tip that we learned, which is describe um, for command, uh, can be helpful here as well. So I can just take, get this pod, and run the uh, kubectl describe pod and pass the pod name. And I can see this pod. I can see uh, the, the labels that it has. I can see uh, the image. Um, but uh, here, if I look at the events at the end, I see that uh, it failed, uh, got a failed scheduling uh, a warning here uh, from the scheduler saying that zero out of two nodes are available uh, where two insufficient CPUs, two insufficient memories, right? So first of all, what you can see here that I have two nodes in my cluster, right? So I can just write the kubectl get uh, nodes and you'll see that indeed I have these two nodes, right? Um, and you can uh, look at any of these nodes. They are identical in, in terms of, um, of the spec. So I can run the get node and the name of the node, then dash o yaml 
to see more information about this node. And here it shows me the operating system, show me the kernel version, um, and I can scroll here and see um, the uh, amount of CPU and memory, right? So I see that it has two cores of CPU um, allocatable and uh, it has eight gigabytes of, of memory, right? Now, let's go back um, and describe our pod again. And if you see here in this pod spec, it tried to, get, to use a lot of CPU and memory, uh, both for the requests and the limit, right? So um, as the request is over um, what the, each of my nodes can offer, so um, the scheduler would just, just say, this pod cannot run on any of your nodes because, uh, and neither of them has enough CPU or memory. So to fix this, uh, we can just change the amount of, of CPU and memory uh, that uh, we request and, and also the limit. Uh, so to do that, um, let's go and search for, um, and this is the uh, YAML spec for, for that. I can just go and um, open this and I see that uh, here under the resources section, um, I could go and, and change it, right? So I can go and say, okay, memory, I'll only ask for 64 MI and um, I'll only ask for a quarter of a, of a CPU core. And we can do uh, for the limits, uh, let's say maximum of 128 and uh, maximum of a half of a core of uh, CPU. So I can then save this spec and then um, if I run the get pods command again, right? Get pods. Um, right, so we have this pod still stuck on pending. Um, now instead of deleting it and then creating a new pod uh, from my spec, I can just use the apply command of, of Kubernetes, right, of kubectl um, to uh, apply the changes. So um, after I save it, I can just run kubectl apply dash f to pass the file and I'll just pass this file that we just edited together, right? So I save it here and we can just apply it. And now if I run the get pods command again, I see that it's now uh, running, right? So it was pending before, now it's running. And if I describe it again, so describe pod and provide the pod name, I can see that now, uh, indeed, the resources section, both the limits and requests was uh, changed. And now um, the scheduler is able to, um, to schedule my pod on one of the nodes, right? Um, so that was uh, for fixing a, a pending a, a pod. And again, um, not enough resources like CPU or memory. This is one of the reasons why we would see a pending pod other uh, uh, scenarios would be that the current namespace um, has a resource quota uh, object and creating the pod will make the namespace go over the quota. Okay, so that's another scenario. And um, a third scenario is that the pod is bound to a pending uh, PVC, right? A pending persistent volume plane. Um, so that was for um, a pending pods. We got this figured out um, and we can move forward. Okay, let's present this again. And yeah, we finished with the demos on um, the first section of, uh, of, of errors, right? Where containers don't even start. Um, now we uh, uh, reach our third tip for today, which is check your logs. Okay, so this is obviously another popular command uh, in a, a Kubernetes, which is the kubectl logs um, pod, then the pod name to see uh, the pods of uh, the logs of our pods, right? So um, now that we have the container started, uh, we can see um, the application is functioning correctly by checking the logs. Um, now let's see a common error that you might get uh, for a container that started, but it's then uh, immediately crashing, which is the crash loop back off um, uh, status, which um, I'm sure that some of you have seen before. Um, so this error, again, just to um, be clear, um, it's an error that, that occurred after 
the container has started. So it started um, uh, as opposed to all the errors that we mentioned uh, so far when the container itself didn't even start. Here it starts, but then it crashes. Uh, so why would it crash? Why would it uh, reach this status of uh, crash loop back off? So uh, usually a container uh, would crash immediately um, if uh, one of the following scenarios happens. So one, if there is an error in the application inside the container that prevents it uh, from starting, right? And we'll see an example of that. Um, the second is if you misconfigured the container. Uh, what does that mean? So for example, let's say that the Docker CMD is exiting, exiting immediately um, as maybe uh, there was something wrong or you have a missing CMD or entry point configured and then um, the image is built but it can't start, right? Because it doesn't know which command to run. Um, and the third uh, scenario is that the, live, the liveliness uh, probe failed too many times. Um, so for you who knows that you have the, uh, the liveliness a, a probe that you can add to check um, uh, the, the liveliness of, of your pod to see if uh, the application inside the container is running as expected. So you can configure it as, as you want. And then if the application uh, doesn't meet the requirements that you configured in the, in the liveliness pod, then um, it would just go into crash loop back off. Um, so in uh, such scenarios where you see a pod uh, with the status of crash loop back off, uh, you should try to retrieve the logs uh, from that container to investigate why it failed. Okay, so uh, again, crash loop back off, it tells us that, tells us that Kubernetes is trying to launch this pod, uh, but one or more of the containers is crashing or getting killed. And so I know that we just, um, um, mentioned the, the first, the, the third uh, tip, which is to see the logs. Um, but even now, let's first um, go and see uh, in the demo, see uh, the what this fry pod command uh, returns for such scenarios. So I see that I have this pod here and, and I see it's on crash loop back of status, right? So I'm going to first describe it using our second tip. Um, so describe pod, paste the pod name, and what you see here, so you see that Kubernetes is telling us that this pod is being terminated, right? Uh, due to the application inside the container crashing, specifically, uh, we can see that the application exit code is one, right? So here, um, as opposed to the other scenarios that we saw uh, up until now, um, the uh, container starts, but then the application inside the container uh, returns an exit code one, and then uh, the pod is being terminated. Um, so the first thing that we can do is check our application logs, right? So um, I can then uh, clear this uh, screen. Let's get the pods again using our first tip. And now let's go and see the logs. So I can uh, take this pod name, run the kubectl logs command, paste the pod name, and click enter. And unfortunately, I don't see any logs. Okay, so uh, remember, and this is just the best practice, that um, you uh, should send your application logs to the standard output, right? To STD out. Uh, this is a very good practice because it will help you debug um, if something went wrong. Because you see here, um, it seems like um, the uh, the person that created this application didn't send um, his uh, application logs. Um, to the standard outputs, and then we can't see anything. Um, now, what uh, could also happen is that um, that uh, possibly we're looking at a new restarted instance of the application, and we should also check the previous container. So, what happens is that um, that if the log uh, command produces no output, it's possible that the uh, the pod uh, was showing a newly restarted pod, so we can check the previously dead pod. Uh, so you can do that by running the same uh, logs command, but then just add the dash dash previous. Um, and this should show us the logs of the previous uh, container that ran, uh, but I don't see any logs here as well. So this means that this application uh, is just not sending logs uh, to the standard output, which is a shame, right? Uh, you, you should uh, try to do that. 
And just so you see um, what uh, the kubectl logs command will output for applications that do send um, uh, logs to the standard output, I can see I have here, um, let's change the, the namespace, right? So I'm going to see the pods that I have in a different namespace called codefresh runtime. This is where the uh, codefresh runner uh, running my pipelines uh, resides, right? So I see it's called Vinona. This is my pod here. I see that it's running and I can just run the kubectl logs on this um, on this uh, uh, pod. And again, I just have to mention the uh, namespace that I'm using for this pod. And then it shows me the logs of the application, right? So this is an example of an application that does send uh, the logs to the standard output. Now you see that this command shows me all of the logs um, since this container uh, started. So this sometimes can be a lot of logs, um, some cool tips that you can uh, use um, for watching logs is first, if you want to uh, stream the logs uh, and follow, so you can add the dash F for following the logs and it will just take you uh, to the end and show you any new logs that are getting started, right? If something happens now and the application sends something new to the load, you would just see it immediately. You don't, you won't have to run the command of the kubectl logs again and again. Uh, to exit, you can just uh, to control, control C. Um, another useful thing is to get the last uh, 10 lines. Uh, you can do that by adding the dash dash tail um, equals 10. And this will just show me yeah, the last 10 lines here. Um, so these are just uh, also super useful uh, commands to get the logs of the application to see if the container already started, um, but still you get a crash loop back off. Um, you want to see why your application is crashing, the container is crashing, then uh, check out the logs. Um, going back to the presentation, uh, let's see our fourth tip. Uh, getting closer to the end of this presentation um, is uh, running the SH or bash directly in your pod. Uh, so why would you want to do that? When would you want to do that? Um, so this command kubectl exec dash it then the pod name uh, this is what uh, can help you get inside the pod and run commands to troubleshoot your application. Um, so it's useful uh, to run an interactive command within one of the containers of your pod. And um, so sometimes um, you would wanna uh, debug things like, um, okay, you see that you have uh, uh, networking communication from the host running your cluster to some endpoint, but still your application failed. Maybe um, the container itself doesn't have access to this endpoint. Um, so what you can do, and let's see an example of that, and we can use the same Vinona pod here. Um, you can log into the container itself. So you can just run the kubectl uh, exec yeah, dash it, and then pass the name of the pod, right? Which is uh, Vinona, this uh, number here, pass the, the namespace, and then we can use either sh or bash. Um, I can just use um, sh see here and now you see that I'm now um, it's going to get me inside the pod right so I can now see all of these files are um, uh, mounted here inside this uh, uh, the container running for this pod um, I can now run like a curl command I see that I have curl here now so I can just um, run the uh, apk add uh, curl and it's going to install curl inside my container now I can run uh, like a curl command uh, to, let's say, google.com, see that I have access to this. And I see that I get a response. So you see, I can run commands in my container. I can see environment variables, for example, that I'm using here. Um, I can um, do anything that I want inside this container. I can install. Uh, tools like I just did with curl. I can check connectivity. Uh, I can see files that are mounted uh, to this container. And once I'm finished uh, uh, troubleshooting, I can just um, type exit and enter, and it's going to take me outside of my container. So this is also very useful 
um, this is for uh, logging in um, and running commands inside the container inside your pod. So this is the kubectl exec dash it command. Um, and uh, lastly, so this is what we did, just did actually uh, running commands inside the pod and we saw how to do that. And the last tip um, that we're going to discuss today is to show the cluster level events. And so we saw events for a specific pod, right? In the in the describe using the describe command. Um, but this command, kubectl get events, um, it can show you the events um, in the cluster level. So what happens is that uh, Kubernetes fires events whenever the state of uh, the resources uh, it manages change. So for example, from normal or there's a warning. Um, and they help us understand what happened behind the scenes. So the get event command uh, provides an aggregated perspective of events. And there's a few commands that you can use uh, for that um, to, to see events. So let's let's go back to our terminal. And I can, to, to see all of the events uh, sorted by time, I can run the kubectl uh, get events. And then I'll add the uh, sort by um, equals metadata creation time step. So it's going to show me all of the events sorted by time. And if I run this command now, I can see. So you see everything that happens uh, during our webinar, actually, right? So you see that uh, I saw that I had a pod that failed here 31 minutes ago with the image pulled back off. I got this uh, um, back off restarting failed container. Then I saw this uh, um, node that failed to, uh, this pod that failed to, uh, re to, to schedule uh, pods because of insufficient CPU and memory, all that stuff. I see that there was a container here that started, uh, here's a container that was created, et cetera. So I see all of the events here and I see which of them is of type warning and which of them is of type normal. If you wanna see, for example, only the events uh, for warnings, you can run the kubectl get, sorry, get events and just have the field selector involved object, um, wait, not this one, field selector uh, type equals warning. So it will show us only the events of warning, right? You can do the same, of course, for uh, normal. Um, so that's for using events. Again, also a, a useful tip to see uh, what happened in your cluster. Uh, so to summarize, um, and uh, this is the things that you should remember uh, from this webinar. Um, so if the pod didn't start, so the container didn't even start, uh, always try to run the kubectl describe to see the events. Um, so we saw errors like um, image pool back off where the uh, the image uh, uh, couldn't be uh, pulled by the cluster. Maybe the image name was was invalid, or the tag was invalid, or we saw that maybe the image uh, was on a private registry and, and the cluster didn't have access to pull it. Um, we saw, for example, the container creating uh, a status where our pod were stuck in, in container creating or pending. So the, the pod didn't even start. The container didn't even start, and then describing. The pod uh, really helped us uh, with understanding what was the, the reason for the failure. Um, then uh, for scenarios where the pod is crashing, so the container starts, but then it immediately crashes, um, this uh, can mean that the application running inside the container is crashing. So like we saw, uh, for example, with the exit code one. Um, so for that, and, and remember this is a good practice, always have your application logs uh, sent to the standard output, right? To the STD out. And then um, you'll be able to see the logs uh, when running kubectl logs, then uh, followed by the pod name, obviously. Um, and you can see only the last 10 uh, lines of the pod, of the log. You can follow the log with the dash F. Um, and uh, finally, if you need to run commands inside the pod, inside the container to be uh, correct, uh, inside the pod, you can use the kubectl exec dash it then the pod name uh, to get inside the pod, install tools inside it, run commands inside it, um, see um, if it has a network connection to uh, the endpoint that you expect it to have, etc. Um, so that 
is the end of uh, my presentation. Thank you very much. And I think we are ready to take some uh, questions now. Yes, yes, we've gotten a lot of questions in so far, but there is plenty of time. If you have a question for Guy, please uh, go ahead and use your GoToWebinar control panel, submit your question, and uh, we'll try to get to as many as we can during the question and answer period. Okay, first question here. Uh, sometimes you see the age not updated as with the pod starting web 1-85. It is reporting nine days while it just started. Why is that? I think that was um, during one of your demos. I think your first demo, perhaps. Yeah, let's see. Um, interesting. Let's see the get pods. Um, yeah, so I see the age. Um, yeah, you're right. For this guy, hmm, because uh, it just restarted, I guess, right? Because you see that um, this we didn't even touch, right? It was still running. Um, and this guy is, uh, I didn't really delete the pod uh, or anything. I just edited the running pod and just changed the, the image. So mm. it just restarted here. And then uh, the age just um, kept the, the original age. Okay. All right, great. So uh, next question then for crash loop back off. Does the pod mm -hmm. keep retrying if I fix the deployment or workload resource related? Would that reflect back on the existing pod or should I delete them? Yes, so um, so it keeps retrying. You see even, for example, for this guy, uh, you see that it already tried to restart 595 times and <laughs> every, every time, sorry? No, that's all right, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so every time it gets this uh, exit code one, and it says, oh, you know what, maybe I'll try again. So it restarts again, still gets this article one, and then um, and then it, it, that's why the, the status is still uh, crash loop back off. But um, if you uh, fix it um, uh, and you edit the, the pod like we did for this guy, you edit this pod, you change something in, in your uh, Docker file or whatever, um, then it should automatically um, get the changes and you don't have to delete and, and recreate. All right, great. Next question. Uh, do you have to be in system namespace to get events? Um, mm, yeah, good point. Um, so here I'm, I'm an admin of this cluster. So that's why I can see things like uh, get nodes, right? So I can see the nodes of, of the cluster. Uh, which is something pretty sensitive. Um, obviously, if you're working in some organization and you have uh, a production cluster or some cluster where you don't want everybody to have access to all of the resources, um, then you can limit their user uh, using a service account to access and to have um, ability to access only specific things. So uh, like, like the get nodes, um, I think is only available if you have a cluster role. Um, um, and not a role per namespace. And um, I think that also the, the get events is probably also um, available only have, if, you, if you have a cluster role um, kind of role for your user. Yeah. All right. Pretty sure. All right. <laughs> okay, then. Uh, plenty of time for questions, guys. We've got a ton of them in mm -hmm. already. But uh, yeah, uh, if you have one, go ahead and send it on in. Next question here. When you change the code in the YAML file, it directly reflected in, ter in the terminal where you just executed apply, the apply command. How, how did it reflect there in the terminal and how did you automate it without uploading those files? Um, so first, uh, I think I did that, for example, for the, uh, the, the resources guy, right? So let's run the kubectl get pods command and we can even do that together again. So I see that this pod is currently running, right? So there are two ways um, to change or to fix your pods. One would just be to run the kubectl uh, edit command and then, sorry, then say pod and then paste your pod. And here I can scroll down here and I can see my resources. I can go and change them from here, right? Um, and then obviously it would be reflected because I'm editing like a live pod, but this is not what I did um, in the demo, right? So I can let's see, exit here. 
Um, what I did is, as I mentioned, and I also uploaded all, all of these files to the GitHub repo, is the way that I created this pod was using this YAML file, right? So I can just click on this YAML file. I can edit it here. And if you see, you see the name, so you see that this is a kind deployment, you see that the name here is my, my demo app second. This is the namespace. Um, I see the metadata here under the spec. Um, this is the container. So going back here, you see that it's exactly this pod, right? So if I then um, make any changes here, like I did before, so let's say I ask it now for more um, resources, yeah? Um, and change this one, and okay, so this is what I did before, right? So now I can save this YAML file, okay? And I'm going back to my terminal, I can now, if I go here, I see that, so, so this is the YAML file that I changed. I changed it and you can see here in the time that this is the last time that it was updated just right now. So if I now apply these changes, right? So with, with kubectl, you can either create or apply. So create will create a new uh, resource. Apply will check also if there's an existing resource with the same name, it would just um, apply the changes, right? So you, you don't have to delete it and then create it again. You can just apply it. So if I now apply this guy, right? Because this YAML file was already changed and I run the get pods command again. And I see that now it's pending, right? Um, so this is how I do it. I just um, edit the, the YAML file that points exactly um, to the name of this pod. And then uh, once I apply it, it will uh, make changes to this running pod. Sorry, this guy. All right, great. Uh, quick time check. We're about seven minutes to the top of the hour. So I think we have time for one more question, um, which is, what is the difference in using apply command versus replace? Hmm. Um, good question. Uh, not sure. I think that apply would check uh, and leave all the uh, all the, the fields that that are uh, are still identical. Like for example, you see the only thing that I changed once I ran uh, this command, I only changed these fields, right? The CPU and memory for the requests and limits. So I think that apply would just leave all the rest as is and we'd only replace, uh, we'd only apply the changes that I made while replace would just discard like the existing YAML completely and we'll just take a new one. Um, so um, that's what I think, I'm, but to be honest, I'm not sure. I usually use apply um, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, not, okay. not super sure about replace yet. Okay, yeah, all I, right. I can answer this. So hello everybody, I'm Kostis. I also work with CodeFresh. Uh, replace deletes the resource before applying the changes. Apply mm. works directly in place. That's it. Mm. All right, great, glad. Thank you very much for that, Kostis. Um, and I hope that answered all the questions um, regarding that. Uh, we are about six minutes to the top of the hour, so uh, let's let's throw one more question in, and then we'll close it out. Um, for interactive sh slash bash troubleshooting, what if the container does not have sh slash bash? Mm -hmm. um, good question. So we can actually see, um, yeah, what would happen if I use, let's look at the exec command before, right? So I used sh, let's try to use bash. And if it doesn't have bash, then it would just throw, oh, so this guy has bash, but if it doesn't, it would just throw an error saying, you know, you, I can't run bash here because I don't have bash. Um, SH, you would usually have, um, but uh, there, there could be a, any kind of command uh, that you could potentially run uh, in, in your container, like any shell that you, you can spin up, it, then you can be, it can be bash, it can be SH, it can be other things. So uh, just make sure that you, you use uh, something that is available um, within your container. SH, uh, would most of the time, 99% uh, of the time, you would have, um, or I think maybe all of the time, for uh, Linux-based containers. Yeah. 
All right. Great. Well, we're about four minutes to the top of the hour, so I'm going to have to close out the question and answer period. You could see on the uh, on the screen there is a um, uh, the ability to schedule one on one with an expert on the CodeFresh website. So uh, feel free to do that, guys. Guy, I want to uh, thank you very much for such a great presentation. Lots of good information, and, and honestly, judging by the number of questions we got from the audience very very well received so very uh, very good presentation overall thanks so much appreciate it sure thank you and thanks everybody for joining and again you have my email address there um, at the bottom of this uh, slide so feel free um, to to ping me for any questions about kubernetes the icd um, anything at all um, i'll be happy to help all right great also want to thank the audience for joining me today this is charlene o'hanlon and i'm signing off have a great day everybody